I've had a lot of requests um, to talk about my uh, process on how I do this kind of luminous um, jelly printing technique. And so I'm going to show that to you today. Um, first, let's talk about materials. Um, the paper I'm using today is Blick 60 pound in the 9 by 12 size. I'm just using this in the context of making a small book, but any paper probably would work. Um, you just want to have something that's kind of light enough to get a good stencil impression, but heavy enough to hold up for whatever project you're working on. In this case, uh, book pages. Um, you want something with a little bit of substance. I have actually used um, like lined school paper that my kids uh, had left over from the previous year uh, for making books, but it is it doesn't stand up well to collage. So something in between like a copy paper and a cardstock works well. And then <clears throat> I'm gonna use a little bit of this matte gel uh, to kind of thin out some of the paints to make uh, glazes. You can have your selection of um, stencils, you know, in a variety of sizes and types. I just got these in the mail, so I thought I would maybe use one of them today. And then uh, as far as paints go, um, I'm using Golden Open Acrylics. They are heavy bodied, and which means they're kind of thicker viscosity, and they are slow drying, um, which is very helpful with this technique uh, because when you roll it out, when you roll the paint out very thin, as I do, um, it can dry a lot faster, and um, especially if you're in a dry climate, that can be a problem. So, I, you know, I, I highly recommend them. You can use other heavy body paints. Um, you just probably have to work a little faster. The fluid acrylics don't seem to work super well for this technique. Um, you can certainly try them, but uh, the way that I'm using them is to roll out a very thin layer and to kind of let the edges drift off into nothingness and with the fluid acrylics, it tends to dry along the edges and you just end up with a strip of color, uh, which is not quite the effect that I am going for. So um, I'm gonna show you several techniques and I think I have a list of about seven things that I was planning on showing you. And I'm gonna use um, about four sheets of paper. When I do this technique, I, it, it makes more sense to print multiple sheets at once. I'll show you a sample of one that I have done uh, that somehow didn't make it into a book, but um, this sheet I counted I think has probably about 16 different printings on it. Um, and that's just on the one side. I did print the other side. I think I probably didn't put it in a book because I wasn't totally done with this one, but um, it's a pretty labor intensive uh, technique. And, you know, most people when they, when they print with the jelly, the jelly plate, they'll take their plate, they'll ink it up and they'll print a picture. And I do do that. Um, in some of my books, um, just because I want to have some focal point or you know object of interest on a page, but the strategy for doing this technique is more of a patchwork uh, technique, and so because of that, you can use a relatively small jelly plate in relation to your paper. So with a nine by twelve sheet of paper. I am actually using a, my 5x7 jelly plate 
I'll use the six by six some of the time. And then for like small elements like this, I will just use my three by five because I only want, you know, a very small amount of paint in a very small area. So as I said, I'm going to be printing with four sheets of paper. Um, typically when I do a book, a small book like this one, I'm doing 12 uh, to 15 at a time. Um, 15 if I'm thinking that I might want to discard a couple of them. Uh, but this book has 12 sheets of paper in it, printed on both sides. And by printing a bunch at the same time, you can create unity in your themes, your colors, um, you can have repeating elements on multiple pages, so that's kind of the strategy, and it, it makes for less waste um, as far as paint. We're going to start with the 5x7 jelly plate. Generally, when I print, I, I say this generally, sometimes I don't do this, uh, because I like to experiment, but I usually print from light colors to darker colors. Uh, it's a little easier to avoid getting mud or getting too dark and losing that luminosity. So I'm going to start with cadmium yellow, and it doesn't take a lot of paint. And the first technique I'm going to show you is what I would call a color fade. I'm going to start rolling this paint out. I'll try not to jiggle the table too much because my tripod's on there. But you want to roll it so that the stringiness of the paint disappears and it takes on kind of a, a velvety uh, texture. And yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm just going to pick up that color. And you can see how I have kind of intensity uh, down the center and it just fades off on both sides. And you have both a hard edge and a soft edge um, on the page, which adds for more visual interest. Now I have a little bit of color left on the plate, so I will maybe orient my paper in a different direction and pick that up, and that's going to be a very delicate, lovely yellow. And then I still have paint on my brayer, so typically I will roll that off on a different sheet, maybe in a couple of different areas. I'm sorry, I can't, I didn't show that to you, but yeah, I rolled it off in three different areas to get most of the paint off. And then I'm going to stack all that back up. You do have to keep cleaning in between uh, printings because, well, I mean, you could combine the paint. That would be fine. But in order to get that soft edge, um, eventually, like the paint kind of creeps up to the edges of your brayer, and you'll end up with a hard edge just from the brayer. So I'm going to clean this all up. And we'll switch to a different color. The last one was cadmium yellow dark. This is cobalt teal. This time I'm going to use a stencil. And you really have to work the paint sometimes. If you get kind of a dark spot of paint, you can kind of wiggle it out with your finger. Just make sure you wash your hands afterwards. Now I'm going to put this stencil down over that color fade. And I'll take 
this sheet and I'm going to line it up so that it intersects with that hard edge to kind of soften it. So now you've got the stencil that's fading out and you've got this strip of paint that's fading out and where they intersect they create a nice green. Um, so we'll continue with the printing but first we got to pick up what's on the plate and because I used this uh, slower drying acrylic I can still pick up this impression of what was under the, the stencil and it's a nice kind of faded effect and then I also still have what's on my brayer and I'm going to put that on my fourth sheet and it's a little random where I put it um, I just usually try to avoid the center of the sheet when I, when I do that Now I'm going to do one of the stencils that I got today in the mail. still has a little bit hanging on there. Um, and I'm going to show you how to utilize stencils maybe a little more creatively uh, so that you get more, more bang for your, your buck. I'm going to use quinacridone red. And you know, Now this paint uh, tends to be a little stringier and you really want to work that out until the, the stringy lines are gone because you're just going to end up printing that and it's not, it will not maybe be the effect that you're going for so you kind of want to go back and forth uh, to break that up. And you can see I have a cat hair in my paint, which is not uncommon. So one way you can use your stencils with this color fade technique is maybe you just want the bird and you can position it this way. Maybe you just want flowers and you can position it this way. And it, you don't have to utilize the whole um, stencil. So I'm going to do that. And these shapes down here and up there are not a problem to me. I kind of like them. Um, so let's do, I'm going to do this sheet and just go right up to the edge. Looks pretty good. So it's making it a little bit more um, orangey in the areas where it intersects with the yellow. And we'll print the leftovers. And I'll intersect with the blue. say we do not I don't really like this um, area where it's kind of splotchy um, I just use my roller to kind of soften that up and then you could do a little section up here the repetition I'll show you what I did the repetition kind of harmonizes the page so again I'm cleaning my roller I'm cleaning my plate. So now let's maybe go back to yellow. And 
do uh, a little bit of matte medium with that. About a one-to-one uh, -one ratio just to lighten it up, um, make it more of a glaze. And this time I'm going to take it up to the edge and have the fade go in one direction. So you start out um, just rolling it straight down and then you can kind of lock it to the the other side to get more of a fade and to kind of thin the paint out. That looks pretty good. I'm going to print the back side of this paper. The nice thing about this paint, too, is if you get a mess, sometimes you can just wipe it out with a baby wipe. And I have paint on my fingers. It doesn't bother me too much, but um, if it bothers you, you can. Now that's kind of interesting because there was a little bit of pink left on the paper. Um, and it's it makes for more interest. But uh, you can see how I have a hard edge on three sides and a fade going uh, in one direction. And I still have paint on the paper, so I'm going to do or paint on the jelly plate and then do another print. I didn't get a lot off, that's fine. Um, so one of the advantages of this technique, which I also already kind of shared, is just the ability to kind of pick and choose on the stencils where you are using them. This is cobalt teal again. I'm just using a primary set of paints. Um, cobalt teal leans towards yellow, green. A little bit, but it does work pretty well with this set of paints. I've got some fuzz on there, so I'm gonna just pick that out and keep rolling until it kind of is a little bit matte on the edges and the shine isn't quite so high. So I have this kind of complex stencil that I used earlier uh, just in that section. I could do this, I could do the center. Um, there's a lot of ways you can kind of play around with this. So I'm going to use the center this time. And I will print on my roll off sheet, kind of intersecting multiple. Uh, bits of yellow. Let me check and see how we're doing. That looks pretty good. Sometimes these tiny little bits are hard to get. And you just gotta push with your fingers. So I just kind of pat it in. First we got our leftovers that we need to print on something and we'll print it on that sheet because it looks like it needs some love. Alright, so another technique for doing the patchwork Let's say you've got this area that maybe just doesn't have anything going on and you want it small and you don't really want to have a whole strip, but you want something there. 
All right, I'm going to use the 6x6 six six jelly plate for this because my stencil is 6x6 six six, and it makes the most sense to use that. If you do not own any of the golden acrylics, I would recommend one of these three just to get your foot in the door. The um, quinacridone red is really lovely and it, it plays well with others. In fact, all of these seem to work pretty well with other paints, other colors, but this one's a nice, um, useful red. And I'm going to use this um, dot stencil. Now let's say I want to I want to put some dots here, but I don't want a strip of dots. I'm going to place my fingers over the back of the paper in that one spot, and I can kind of see through uh, the paper as well um, to where I want it to be. And I'm very lightly going to put it down on the, the plate and just press. And now I have some dots. Now if I want more dots, let's say I want them right in here. I'm going to place my hand over that and place the paper very lightly over so that the rest of it doesn't touch and then rub the areas that I do want it to, to print. And now I have this repeating element uh, in a small area using what I would call maybe the pat, pat technique. Now I'm going to print off the rest of this on my last sheet. Sometimes that very last sheet is the one that gets all the weird stuff and it turns out pretty interesting, which is fine. Sometimes they're the best ones. And this one doesn't have any dots on it, so let's put that right there. pretty. I like that. Okay, and then the last technique that I was going to share with you is, uh, let's see, what color do we want? I'm going to use, I'm going to use yellow. Sometimes you need to cover a lot and you want it to be, um, more defined edges and you want it to show up on multiple pages. I'm not going to clean my brayer, I'm just going to see what happens because sometimes the color mixing can be pretty interesting for this and that'll give me kind of an orange. And in this case you do want to change your angle and kind of make sure that most of those lines are gone. So I'm going to print um, sections of this, not the whole plate, at once on one page. I kind of, I like the L shape. Um, I usually try and make it so that one part of the L is thicker and one part is thinner. And then this one, I can put wherever. I don't have to line it up to an edge. And then you smooth it all down. And that gives you an actual shape. A weird shape. It's a pretty color, I like that. It turned out nice. Vibrant orange, and then um, you end up with some lines and maybe some ghosting. 
that you can put on the back of the page. And it kind of creates some structure uh, for your, your piece. Mm. Oh, that's beautiful. That turned out well. I like that. Uh, definitely. Yeah. So, let's take a look at what we did. I've got this one, which I, I really love the, the faint lines there and the intersection, but you can see how everywhere it overlaps, it creates a slightly different color. In some places it fades into an, each other. And obviously all of these will need more work. Uh, but that page, we did not print the back side. I want more that one. And you can see how much time it takes to print like this, but you do end up with some really beautiful effects. So I thought I would share with you this little book that I did recently. Um, you know, I'm, I do not have this technique perfected by any means, and by perfect I mean where everything always turns out exactly right. But what I like about it is that you end up with some really interesting surprises, um, especially when you put it in a book format and the pages are juxtaposed against each other. Um, you know, sometimes you're going to end up with these areas that, like this page is kind of chaotic and I think it needs to be calmed down a bit. And it's good because I have leftover collage strips that I can use to kind of maybe make a quieter area. Sometimes the pages look really pretty good as they are. I like this one a lot as it is. And then sometimes they're missing something like this is a bird themed book and there's only like one little partial image of a bird on this page and, and I guess there's one there but you know I might want to put an actual full full image of a bird in order to make the book work. Um, sometimes the color gets a little dead if you get too aggressive with the overlapping. Uh, too many layers can make it kind of not look great or say you have a bit of white showing that's like drawing your eye too much and you want to cover that with something. The collage uh, paper that you get out of this technique is pretty helpful. So I hope that's enough for you guys to kind of get started with this process. And if you have questions, um, leave a, qu a comment. And if you like it, like and subscribe. Thanks a lot.